Okay, so I came to think of think of um, I don't actually even remember what we practiced yesterday in this session. <laughs> okay, guru yoga, I'm told. Uh, and um, so um, I was planning. Um, we usually practice guru yoga with. Uh, Yeshe Tsog, Yalan Guru Rinpoche, and uh, then on the other hand, as you know, we have this family of Mahasiddhas supporting um, our style of practice, Pemako Buddhism. Um, and then I was thinking before we started this session, I was thinking how, you know, how to make our little retreat more interesting. And then I remembered um, this short text by Dilgo Khyentse Rinpoche that I read uh, two and a half years ago, I think, on summer retreat. We had a center in Tammisaari, Finland, at the time, and this is what I read. And the way how I got to know of this short text entitled Chok Chen in Everyday Life was through uh, um, Aloka David Smith, who was my predecessor uh, teaching the English and Irish Sangha. So please, straighten your backs. Uh, and I will read this short text, text to you. <coughs> Chok Chen in Everyday Life by Dilgo Kien Tserimpoche. The everyday practice of Chok Chen in simply to, be, to develop a complete carefree acceptance an openness to all situations without limit. We should realize openness as the playground of our emotions and relate to people without artificiality, manipulation or strategy. We should experience everything totally, never withdrawing into ourselves as a marmot hides in its hole. This practice releases tremendous energy, which is usually constricted by the process of maintaining fixed reference points. Referentiality is the process by which we retreat from the direct experience of everyday life. Being present in the moment may initially trigger fear, but by welcoming the sensation of fear with complete openness, we cut through the barriers created by habitual emotional patterns. When we engage in the practice of discovering space, we should develop the feeling of opening ourselves out completely to the entire universe. We should open ourselves with absolute simplicity and nakedness of mind. This is the powerful and ordinary practice of dropping the mask of self-protection. We shouldn't make a division in our meditation between perception and field of perception. We shouldn't become like a cat watching a mouse. We should realize that the purpose of meditation is not to go, in quotes, deeply into ourselves or withdraw from the world. Practice should be free and non-conceptual, unconstrained by introspection and concentration. Vast, unoriginated, self-luminous wisdom space is the ground of being, the beginning and the end of confusion. The presence of awareness in the primordial state has no bias toward enlightenment or non-enlightenment. 
this ground of being, which is known as pure or original mind, is the source from which all phenomena arise. It is known as the Great Mother, as the womb of potentiality in which all things arise and dissolve in natural self-perfectedness and absolute spontaneity. All aspects of phenomena are completely clear and lucid. The whole universe is open and unobstructed. Everything is mutually interpenetrating. Seeing all things as naked, clear and free from obstructions, there is nothing to attain or realize. The nature of phenomena appears naturally and is naturally present in time transcending awareness. Everything is naturally perfect just as it is. All phenomena appear in their uniqueness as part of the continually changing pattern. These patterns are vibrant with meaning and significance at every moment. Yet there is no significance to attach to such meanings beyond the moment in which they present themselves. This is the dance of the five elements in which matter is a symbol of energy and energy a symbol of emptiness. We are a symbol of our own enlightenment. With no effort or practice whatsoever, liberation or enlightenment is already here. The everyday practice of Chokchen is just everyday life itself. Since the undeveloped state does not exist, there is no need to behave in any special way or attempt to attain anything above and beyond what you actually are. There should be no feeling of striving to reach some, in quotes, amazing goal or, in quotes, advanced state. To strive for such a state is a neurosis which only conditions us and serves to obstruct the free flow of mind. We should also avoid thinking of ourselves as worthless persons. We are naturally free and unconditioned. We are intrinsically enlightened and lack nothing. When engaging in meditation practice, we should feel it to be as natural as eating, breathing and defecating. It should not become a specialized or formal event, bloated with seriousness and solemnity. We should realize that meditation transcends effort, practice, aims, goals and the duality of liberation and non-liberation. Meditation is always ideal. There is no need to correct any, anything. Since everything that arises is simply the play of the mind as such, there is no unsatisfactory meditation and no need to judge thoughts as good or bad. Therefore, we should simply sit. Simply stay in your own place, in your own condition, just as it is. Forgetting self-conscious feelings, we do not have to think, in quotes, I am meditating. Our practice should be without effort, without strain, without attempts to control or force, and without trying to become, in quotes, peaceful. If we find that we are disturbing ourselves in any of these ways, we stop meditating and simply rest or relax for a while. 
Then we resume our meditation. If we have, in quotes, interesting experiences, either during or after meditation, we should avoid making anything special of them. To spend time thinking about experience, experiences is simply a distraction and an attempt to become an unnatural. These experiences are simply signs of practice and should be regarded as transient events. We should not attempt to re-experience them because to do so only serves, serves to distort the natural spontaneity of mind. All phenomena are completely new and fresh, absolutely unique and entirely free from all concepts of past, present and future. They are experienced in timelessness, timelessness. The continual stream of new discovery, revelation and inspiration which arises at every moment is the manifestation of our clarity. We should learn to see everyday life as mandala, the luminous fringes of experience which radiate spontaneously from the empty nature of our being. The aspects of our mandala are the day-to-day -day objects of our life experience moving in the dance or play in the play of the universe. By this symbolism, the inner teacher reveals the profound and ultimate significance of being. Therefore, we should be natural and spontaneous, accepting and learning from everything. This enables us to see the ironic and amusing side of events that usually irritate us. In meditation we can see through the illusion of past, present and future. Our experience becomes the continuity of nowness. The past is only an unreliable memory held in the present. The future is only a projection of our present conception, conceptions. The present itself vanishes as soon as we try to grasp it. So why bother with attempting to establish an illusion of solid ground? We should free ourselves from our present memories and preconceptions of meditation. Each moment of meditation is completely unique and full of potentiality. In such moments we will be incapable of judging our meditation in terms of past experience. Dry theory of hollow rhetoric. Simply plunging directly into meditation in the moment now with our whole being free from hesitation, boredom or excitement is enlightenment.
close it, eyes closed or open, doesn't matter. Also mouth can be gently closed or slightly open. Although breathing through the nose, letting the breath flow through the nose. Just like Dilko uh, Kiense Rinpoche in the text says, uh, sitting care carefreely. A bit like a simpleton. Rinpoche's uh, gentle presence a bit helping us pointing pointing us out what he's talking about
text dilko rinpoche he discusses chokchen um, i would like to make a small detour to tantric guru yoga now usually we in our Pemako practice we practice guru yoga with guru rinpoche and yeshe Chogyal. and i would just like to take a moment to compare Dilko Kienze Rinpoche's presence, his personality, with Guru Rinpoche's. So, from my heart, sincerely and humbly, I would like to ask even a stronger stream of blessings from Dilko Rinpoche to each of us, ultimately for the benefit of all sentient beings. Simply be open and receptive, and your body mind automatically picks up Dilko Rinpoche's presence. Let his sweet and tender, yet clear presence come to you. Complete surrender.
tiba-tiba kebetulan saya ingin pop chat please accept our gratitude and our bows may your blessings and presence as a Mahasiddha reach out to many 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 sentient beings in this world and in other worlds realms So I would like to say a prayer or a wish that many people could understand that the help and blessings and guidance of any Mahasiddha of the past, such as Guru Rinpoche, Yeshe Tsongyang, or Dilgo Khyentse Rinpoche, is always available to us to everyone through prayer simply through turning to them and asking their blessings simply through asking them for guidance may that simple yet profound knowledge spread among people and among practitioners for the benefit of and liberation of all sentient beings. Join hands 